Absolutely. You mentioned there about AI governance. In fact, there's a, there's a piece yeah. in the video going out on that very subject, a big deep Excellent. dive, so okay. very close to heart, that one. Yeah. But uh, AI Alliance, your work with partners there, I think also substantiates everything around the AI governance piece as well. So I think that's really interesting. But you mentioned there about different challenges organisations are facing. And again, I think organisational size vertical makes a difference there too. Yeah. And for many organisations dealing with these foundation models, so kind of moving to generative AI in particular, Obviously, there's a huge opportunity there, but there's big challenges. I think some of them are existing ones, so things around integration, but, the, but other things like data lineage, for example, massively important, yes. where, where the governance piece I think, really, really yes. comes into its own. But if you look at all of that, kind of that layer of responsible AI sits under everything, doesn't it? And I wonder if we could kind of drill into that a little bit more about why that has to sit as the kind of catalyst, the, the underpinning of all the innovation we're talking about here and how you're supporting that too. Yeah, well, I think, again, at the end of the day, uh, in these spaces, particularly where you're starting to break new ground, yes. right? Um, whilst I think, you know, most people, whether they be in the boardroom or whether they be end users, mm. kind of have a version of what they think is the art of the possible Absolutely. with AI, I think most also have quite a clear view about what some of the pitfalls are, yeah. right? I mean, there are now some quite widely available uh, examples, right? Indeed, indeed. Perhaps let's just say without going yeah. into detail, where many flavors, are, yeah. yeah, where things haven't gone quite to plan. <laughs> yes, or exactly. Yes. Um, and of course, you know, whilst that's you know really important in terms of the impact it can have on your clients and 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 the whole trust piece. Yes. I mean, you lose a client in, or, or have a, a scenario like that, and you know you're going to struggle to recover Absolutely. from that for for years, possibly. Um, not to talk of government type entities where it's just not possible exactly, right to, exactly. um, the, the, it, there are some very sensitive areas obviously where this can be be a problem so i think you know ibm i think over the years over its 100 plus years of existence you know as a brand has always had a fairly strong association with trust yes. as kind of um one of our defining um, um differentiators and i think that's also something else that comes to the fore when you're looking to partner um, with, as you said, either with local partners who already have built trust with a client or with a certain set of the market or one of the global players. I mean, again, you've seen recent announcements. We've just recently announced um, a new workforce automation um, AI related solution with EY, um, not to speak of, you know, some customer um, focused assistant type uh, engagements with NTT. I mean, I could go on. Absolutely. Many of these will come and there'll, yes. there'll be more. You, you mentioned the SAP one, which is obviously embedding the technology yes. with our technology partners. Um, but without that trust piece and without that ability to, to roll back or to understand exactly what's been going on or how you arrived at a certain set of, of outcomes, um, I think many customers just won't take the step forward. Right. So there's lots of experimentation going on right now. I think, as I said, art of the possible is one thing. But when you deploy something yes. at scale in production, so to speak, or um, you have to be bulletproof. Right. And uh, as I said, I think that's something that we feel that by having focus, not just in terms of the way we built out the technology that provides either our own clients with their use of the technology or uh, our service partners, to give that transparency. Exactly, exactly. Right? And when you've got that, then I think, you know, at least it provides clients with the opportunity to make the choices. That they Indeed. Want. I think particularly looking at the AI governance piece as well, is that move beyond the transparency around it to kind of demonstrable accountability as yeah. well around that. Yeah. Particularly when you look at what's happening with the governance piece and legislation changes across geographies and things like that as well, plus personal accountability for C-suite level. So it's, it's a huge area that's evolving yeah. all the time and complexity involved in that. This can make a much bigger difference and kind of take away some of the, the overburden on that and make it actually a catalyst for innovation rather than the restrictions. I think there's a fascinating area. I mean, if you don't, I think if you don't provide that, then, as I said, I think the overhead and the cost right. and the time involved for clients to actually achieve that level exactly. of, exactly. you know, that industrial level proof of, of, of um, trust um, and governance, the, the cost implications are huge, right? And exactly. I mean, you know, part of what we're here to do is to, to make, or to give our clients the ability to get to those outcomes faster, but exactly. in that kind of trusted ways. Definitely. And I mentioned earlier, I came in here on the tube and mind the gap is ringing in my ears. And my <laughs> excuse a terrible pun, but, but it's true, I think, with this as well. When you look at AI, there's so much like, positive intention, isn't there? 
and particularly when it comes to we must we must embed ethics we must do the governance piece right but the actual implementation of that that can be where the struggle comes and i think the the kind of what's next family i think around that is a great way of that end, end life cycle plus both the structured and unstructured models too which is also super important i mean that is again at the core of our yeah, value proposition exactly. right but just as much at the core is the ability for our clients or our partners to be able to select components. Exactly. That. exactly. That's the beauty of hybrid. That's the beauty of yep. building on open technologies. Yes, That's indeed. the beauty of kind of IBM's um, value prop as it stands right now is there is still the ability to kind of take or pick indeed. the pieces of this equation. But, but you said, I mean, why we're so focused on service is because you know, none of these technologies get deployed without expertise. Yep. Skills. And some of our very largest clients, of course, have built up some of yes. that yep. and are perfectly capable of delivering some of this on their own. But in many cases, um, in some of these new areas, that's not necessarily what they want to do. They exactly. don't want to take that on board. Uh, they'd rather be focused on their core business, right? Yes. Uh, and what it is that they're going to use that technology for exactly. rather than actually building it. And so that, you know, that kind of three way play between the client, the service partner in yep. terms of deployment, and um, the core technology. Um, is where the magic happens. Fantastic.